It doesn't mean this is any more sustainable than this was or this was. I do. So I don't, is the, is the world going to collapse? No. Is this going to go on forever? No, it can't. It can't. So people say, well, where, why, is it, why is it doing that? Where is it coming from? I don't know. I have some ideas. So this is, my, this is from the lab. My buddy Jared Siegel was supposed to be here. He's my counterbalance. I'm kind of the bear. I'm the doom and gloom guy. I'm the, I'm the sky's falling person. He's like, it's never going to fall. It's always going to work out. And his slide is this. His slide is this. He said, if you took a dollar back in 1931, 32, and you invested it, and you just never took it out, you'd have $10,000 today. And that's true. If you are running a race, and you are running a marathon, the, the, the stock market has one of the best returns on your investment of anything you can, you can invest in. Just the Dow Jones, this is the S&P 500. If you just took the money for the S&P 500, it's growing at, a, at a, a large rate. Here's the exact same graph, except I'm not going to chart it logarithmically. See how this goes? 1, 10, 100, 1,000. I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 30,000 the Dow. That is that exact same chart from 1930 up to today. It's just not plotted logarithmically. Is, is the gains the same? It's exactly the same data. Of course it is. But what you can see is bubbles. Now you can start to see the bubbles. And you can see what's happened here. So we did not have nearly inflation. If you bought a house in 1850, that house was worth the same price in 1900. It was worth the same price in 1910. We didn't see the same inflation. And you didn't see the same, you didn't see the same stock price. If you had a dollar. A, a dollar used to buy you something. You could buy a lot with a dollar. People carry around a dollar. And, and now you can't. And the reason is, is back in the 70s, we got off the gold standard. We used to have our money. used to be able to take $35. You go buy an ounce of gold. And we couldn't print more money than we had gold. So it forced our, our treasury to only print what we had. It's a lot like if I, can, if I make $1,000 a month, how much am I going to spend if I don't have any credit available to me? I'm going to print, I'm going to spend $1,000 a month, maybe less. But I can't spend $2,000. But if you give me a $100,000 credit card, how much am I going to spend? Maybe more than $1,000, right? Because I can't. That's what happens when we got off the gold standard back in the 80s. <coughs> it allowed us to print money as much as we wanted. And we did. And so this, the stock market has gone up this much. It has, but so has our inflation. It's, the stock market's... It's not like the dollar in 1980, the dollar that my mom bought groceries with when I was a kid isn't the same dollar today. It doesn't buy the same amount of goods. It doesn't buy the same amount of stock either. It doesn't mean the stock market's gone up in so much value. You've needed to have it go up this much just to keep pace because we have inflation. Part of the reason the stock market goes up is because we have inflation. Part of it is because we generate goods and services. Part is we have poor drip domestic product, but we also have inflation. It's both. So, First thing I want to show here is that we have bubbles. This is the dot-com bubble, the longest expansion period in U.S. history of the whole 300 year, 100 year, last 100 years, is from 1990, right here, this drop, up to year 2000, is exactly 120 months. It was 10 years exactly. We created the internet, cell phones became something we all had, and we started laying fiber optic cable around the world. We started connecting the world in the 90s. Even then, even then, we overdid it. There has never been in our history more economic growth, more new ideas, more companies started than in this time, and it created this bubble. We all got greedy. I remember this time we were saying, it's a new economy. It doesn't matter if your company makes money or not. It's, it's, it's how much, what it's going to do in the future, right? I, I remember saying that in 2000, 1999. And then what happened? Oh my gosh. I had, I had a stock that was $72, it was uh, Lucent. They were doing fiber optic cable. Guess what happened? They laid all the fiber optic cable. Went down to $2. That was terrible. That's what can happen. It's not that the world ends, but you can't have this kind of growth forever because it's unsustainable. This is not how humans live. We don't eat food this way. We don't buy houses this way. We don't do anything this way. We do things as, we, as more of us are alive. We buy more food. We eat more houses. But it's like this because I, the human population isn't expanding like this in the United States. It's expanding like this. So anytime you have these bubbles, you can say, well, this, this probably is not going to last. It's not sustainable. Now, I couldn't have told you when it was going to pop, but here's how bubbles work. When they pop, they usually take about as much time to 
come back to the bottom as they took to get up to the top. That's, a, that's bubble theory. Here's 2008. Boom, we have a crash in 2000. And then we start, there we go, January 2002. Then we go up to the housing market bubble. What, what do they do? We started giving loans. The government, George Bush said, people should own homes. Owning a home is an American right. Remember George, the first, second George W. And George W. And so we started giving loans to everybody. And this created a housing bubble. And, and he wanted to. It's part of the reason we got out of the dot com bubble. We started printing more money but giving it to people to buy houses. This is our housing bubble. But look, what happens? It crashes down. There's a natural supply and demand. It's not that houses become not valuable. They're just not as valuable as we think they are. And supply and demand has to catch up with it to make it valuable again. This is the bubble we've created now. We've never created a bubble like this, ever before. It's not sustainable. It's not normal. It's unusual. We've gotten used to it because we're people. We live in the cycles of, of summer, winter, fall. A year is a long time to us. It's amazing. Something really horrible can happen to you a year when you forget next year, right? Eight years is a long time. It's amazing how 2008 can just be such a far distant memory. We're doing so good now. And it's okay. We are doing good. We're, we're lucky. But it doesn't mean this is any more sustainable than this was or this was. I do. So I don't, is the, is the world going to collapse? No. Is this going to go on forever? No, it can't. It can't. So people say, well, where, why, is it, why is it doing that? Where is it coming from? I don't know. I have some ideas. So I, I didn't know, and this is the question. I look at this bubble, why is this happening? And then it kind of freaks me out. Where is all this money coming from? Are we generating the internet? Have the self-driving cars come out? We've all sold our cars, not in cars yet? No. Why? This is more, there's more growth, this is twice as much growth as we had when we created the internet and the cell phones together. Where is this coming from? Uh, let's see. I don't know why I did it. Oh, oh, sorry. Same, same thing. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is S&P. So Dow Jones is 30 stocks. This is 500 stocks. But the sim similar curves, similar curves. Um, so at the end of the day, if I trend out, where's human people? What's the supply and demand? I don't know what true supply and demand is. It's different for every industry. But if I looked at the stock market, I would say there's a natural curve. It's probably sloping at two to three or four percent growth because that's what GDP grows at. So if, I, if someone had to ask me, what do you think the downside is? Someone says, hey, I think it's a good buying opportunity now. It dropped a couple thousand points. I don't think so. I'm not an economist, but that's not how bubbles pop. If you would have said, hey, look at what a great time. The, stock, the, the housing market dropped. 2,000 points, I should buy right now. Well, no, you would, have, you would have been killed, right? I think right now we're in an undulation period, and I think that for a lot of reasons, I think we're going to have a down market. And it's going to be steep. And it's going to be steep for a lot of reasons, I'll tell you about that. But here is this data. I took this data right here, from 2009 to as far as I could, and I plotted it against the, the, uh, the Fed's balance sheet. The Federal Reserve, right, we're the richest people in the world, and we can buy whatever we want, and we have a printing press that prints free money, right? So I can just print it and give it away. What did they do? From 2009 to 2015, they printed $4.5 trillion. And I'm going to show you a video of what a trillion dollars looks like, because it's <laughs> unbelievable. We, 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 lose, we lose perspective when, we, when, when numbers become familiar to us. A billion dollars used to be a huge sum of money. There wasn't billionaires. A millionaire was a really rich person. But a trillion dollars is such an unfathomable amount of money. Um, I just want to say this. Remember, we've printed four and a half trillion dollars. The red line is the S&P 500. That's the stock market. This line is the Fed putting money into circulation. And this is the, the alignment of graphs is called correlation. If you have one graph that's, that's going up and down here and it's down over here, the, the correlation is low. When you have a line that basically follows another line, that's correlation. And usually correlation means there's something entangled there. If, if the graphs are correlated well, that means there's entanglement in the data. Which means, someone says, well, where did the $4.5 trillion dollars go? Well, I don't know. I think a lot of it went in the stock market. We printed the money. We gave it to the banks. The banks lent it to people to buy houses and to companies. Companies have bought, have bought more money during the last eight years than anybody else. And what did they do? They bought their stock back, right? Most companies didn't build a bunch of new facilities, right? We didn't build new auto plants in the United States. They just bought their stock back. And they've been killing that. They borrow money for free, basically, half a percent, one percent. They buy their stock back, and their stock's gone up three times. So this, this, where the 2008 
2000, I think it was a dot-com bubble that stimulated our growth. In 2008, it was housing. This time, it's debt. And I'll show you why I also think that. Take a look at this. This is the, the amount of U.S. debt that has been printed over the last 30 years, right? There it is graphed by itself. This is our U.S. debt. We didn't used to have billions and trillions of dollars of debt. This is new. This, this, this is new. There's 1940. We didn't, we, to have a billion dollars or two billion dollars of debt was a big deal for our country. We have 22 trillion dollars of debt now. And there's that same graph. I just took this line and I transposed it over the Dow. That is a high correlation to debt to the stock market. It doesn't mean the stocks are not value. It doesn't mean the companies aren't producing goods. It just means that a lot of the value is created because we printed the money and it's debt, it's debt based. So, if someone asked me, how long do you think the stock market's gonna to continue to go up? I would say as long as this debt curve looks like this, I think that stock market curve will also look like that. Could the stocks go to 30,000? God, maybe, I don't know. Two things allow us to, to print money on a time. <coughs> but, but if either, either we print more money and the stock market's keep going up, or people stop believing that we can use the dollars where we have. We stop, someone starts saying, you know what? I don't want dollars anymore. You've printed $20 trillion. At some point in time, people might not take them like they have, right? This happens, and this is a cycle we're not familiar with. This is a cycle that's repeated throughout human history. Every single, every single culture in human history, the Greeks, the French, the English, the Romans, everybody debased their currency. Why? It's easy. I can print money for free, I can spend money on wars and services and goods, and my people, I have a republic, and they vote me. The more money I spend, the more votes I get. And so who do we elect? We elect the people who can spend the most money for what I want. I want tax cuts, right? That's spending money. When I don't want to pay taxes, that's me spending money. I want free housing, and I want free healthcare, and I want free this, that's spending money. And we vote for those people, that's why we continue to make more debt, and we'll print it until other people won't take it anymore. So, what to do about that, I don't know. But that's, there's the data right there. Um, I'm gonna show you something else, check this out. Everyone should look at this. This is the US debt clock, and we forget this. This is, this is produced by the Fed. Federal Reserve puts this out. And this is the running tally of our U.S. national debt. We're almost at $22 trillion. It was at $19 trillion not that long ago, a year or two ago. It's at $22 trillion. Every year, the current deficit, so the U.S. government, we have a GDP. We all make money, you make money, you make money, and we all pay taxes. All the taxes the U.S. government takes in, the U.S. government takes in $3.3 trillion in taxes. We take in more money in taxes than most countries' GDP in the whole world. We have more money than almost any other country in the world. We make so much in taxes, but we spend so much money. And what do we spend it on? We spend it on Medicare, Social Security, defense, and interest on our debt, okay? The Medicare and Medicaid is $1 trillion, Social Security is $2 trillion. That's $2.1 .2, trillion. We spend $2 billion a day just on excess spending. And that comes from Medicare and Social Security. Almost two-thirds of our spending comes from entitlements, Medicare and Social Security. And the truth is, are those going to get any smaller over the next decade? No. The baby boomers are all retiring. More people are going to be on Medicare. More people are getting Social Security. We haven't even hit the top of the bubble of the people who are going to need more money. It is. The, the, you have interest on the debt. And you have the interest right here. Interest on the debt. We spend three, $300 million just on the interest. And that is at a quarter percent interest. That's, what? A, that's a year, right? A year. But what happens if we raise the interest rates, which we've been doing, right? The, the debt, how we pay debt is really complex, and so I'll explain it. But if, if you say, if I spend $300 trillion or $300 billion on debt and it's at a quarter percent interest, and I raise the interest to 1%, what's my, what's my cost in the debt? It's twice, it's not just twice as much, as it's three times, it's four times, it's two doubles. Because if you go from a quarter percent to half a percent, that's a double, right? So that goes from three to 600, 600 million. And then from half a percent to one percent is another double. That's $1.2 trillion in debt just by raising it just to one percent. So someone says, can we raise our interest rates back up high enough so that we can stave off inflation? No, we can't afford it. We, to raise interest rates, I mean, we have to raise interest rates on ourselves. 
That's another unique thing. We've gotten to the point where we're so heavily debt, there's a lot of the levers aren't available to us. And so that's another factor that's going on. Um, and these numbers right here, Medicare and Social they're not going away anytime soon. They're only getting bigger. So is the debt going to go down? No. <clears throat> so is the stock market going to go down? I don't know. If we're going to keep printing debt, maybe it doesn't go down. Maybe it keeps going. But at some point in time, someone says, this isn't sustainable, you guys. This isn't going to work. So I'm not going to loan you any more money. I'm not going to do this anymore. And that's kind of, that is the cycle that we're, we could be coming into.